I'm your power hour. I'm David Strickle. I'm here with David Rude. Hello. Nice to see you all. The, the not very rude David Rude. <laughs> I've never known you to be rude. So I, I, yeah, I, I, I try to not live up to my name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the slightly insensitive, but never rude David. I'm just kidding. Right. <laughs> uh, so uh, this is the first time we've done this in a long time. And tonight we're not just on Patreon. This is a show that we do for Patreon. Uh, but we are also uh, on a couple of uh, things on Facebook. We're in the Stream of David uh, Facebook page, and we, are, which is, I was told was dead, and it's not dead. It's very much alive, I'm finding. Uh, and the Thai Practice Facebook group. Uh, we've been kind of quiet in both of these places for the last year. Uh, and we're also on YouTube. So right now we're in Patreon. We're also publicly broadcasting on these other places. Claim Your Power is really uh, all about the stream's teachings. Uh, the stream is my source being that I share. Some people call that channeling. If you want to call that channeling, it's fine with me. Uh, I don't trans channel anymore. Uh, little news flash for a lot of people. I'm not saying that I'll never necessarily do that again, but I, I have done a lot of work, uh, to detune the matrix, detune my ego, not eliminate, <laughs> but detune. And I feel so stream or source aligned now that I don't feel like I need to go into all of that. I can do that. It's entertaining for people. I know they love to feel like they're talking directly to source, but source is in all of us. And we all have that. It's not even really, I've always called it a connection. It's not a connection. It's, it's part of us. It's, it's really the core of who we are, but we all have this, this ego consciousness that sort of blends with that to give us this unique human experience. And the ego is something that in our Taya practice that we talk about all the time, we work to detune, not eliminate, but to detune. Because if you are living in fear, if you are living in judgment, uh, if you're really caught up in, in other people's opinions and, and comparing yourself to others, if you're struggling, if you're not living in abundance, um, you know, if you're unhappy, then you've got a lot of ego going on. All of that stuff is, is a product of ego. And it can all be detuned and life gets really good when you detune your ego. And when you systematically detune your ego for a lifetime, you just get more and more and more source and more clarity, which brings more joy for me at least, and certainly more allowing of abundance, whatever that means to you. So David, I'll let you talk now. <laughs> David's oh, a graduate yeah. of Thaya Boot Camp. Yeah. Uh, and an ongoing Thaya practitioner, right? Yeah. It's been a, a year now, I think. I no, I graduated like June of 2022, I think. Yeah. We're coming up on a year. We'll be there before we know it. It goes, yeah. Oh, yeah. And if anybody has questions or comments, pop them in the chat. Uh, Susan, hi. I see you, Susan. Thanks for being here. Um, and if you're watching in Patreon, click the link to youtube and go over to youtube side because um uh if you put the comments in patreon we won't be seen uh we won't see them directly live they'll be seen after the fact people can comment but if you want to comment live which is great you should because uh that way you can like ask us loads of questions and uh make us work <laughs> i mean answer them <laughs> because you know it's funny because I've been really wanting to have like more kind of just community and more involvement because I feel like when I'm in my own bubble, <clears throat> I mean, I have my own version of Taya that I like uh, and is very valuable to me, but it's in the sort of synergy of like having conversations about it and asking questions and being asked questions and being challenged really, you know, that the, that you really grow, you know, I think it, no one really growth doesn't occur in a vacuum you know so so ask questions uh jump on leslie hello nice to see you good to see you boys uh and buckle up for listening and enjoying great uh thanks for coming and uh joe zamora good to see you joe hi joe good to see you yeah i'm gonna pop these on so i can see what the heck's going on on oh. our <laughs> nice so yeah. you can ask any question that you want you can still ask questions of the stream uh, whether I'm in trance or not, I will get an answer. And if I can't get an answer, I'll say I'm not getting an answer, <laughs> right, right. but I, I just want to, um, you know, I, I've been channeling, uh, for years now publicly and I've been on lots of podcasts and lots of YouTube shows and lots of Facebook lives. 
And I, I know what the stream is going to say before it's channeled because they are not n anywhere near as complex as we are. All this complexity that we create, again, that's a product of ego. And I want to be really clear, if you're new to, to all of this, you're new to the stream's teachings, um, ego is not a bad thing. I, I will talk about detuning ego a lot. I do believe that we, our ego, the purpose of our ego is to be a discerner of preference in this world of contrast, if you will. Uh, the, the earth environment, I think, is just magnificent. It's a beautiful place with lots of beautiful things. There are lots of things that we all desire to experience as physically manifested beings here. And part of the deal of being in physical, and you will learn this from the stream's teachings, is that <clears throat> the, the things that we appreciate are all expressions of source. And we love that stuff. But we don't live in a utopia. And we're not going to live in a utopia. And, and they're very, very clear and actually very logical on why we're not. Because if we were all living in this utopia, the only way we would create utopia is if we were all the same exact vibration. Meaning there was nothing to disagree about. Nobody was thinking a thought other than what everyone else was thinking. We would just be these kind of robotic beings just living in joy all the time, which sounds lovely. But we expand our consciousness via new creation. And when you are living in utopia, you are not expanding your consciousness because you're not creating anything new because you don't want anything. Mm -hmm. You need nothing in utopia, right? We all love each other. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. There's no problems to be solved. We get everything that we want all the time. That's lovely. And I do believe that our, our eternal consciousness is that. That is source. That is God. That is pure love. But when we come to earth or any physical environment, we acquire this consciousness that we call ego. And that ego sets about discerning preferences. I like this. I don't like that. We don't all have the same preferences. We're all unique strands of consciousness in this expression. And in the discernment of those preferences, we find things that we don't like or want. And we actually create to overcome them and move through them and, and, and correct them and, and all of those things, all of our creation occurs because we believe something can be made better. And if you're in a utopian state, that doesn't exist. So the basis of all of our teachings is that imperfection is perfection. That does not mean that we cannot be more uh, joyous beings, that we can't be healthier, we can't be uh, more abundant, however that you know you define that. Uh, we can't get along better, that we can't find peace and all of that stuff. We do strive for that stuff. That's the driver of the creation. So it's not about just being physically manifested, accepting that the world is broken or damaged or, or evil or whatever you want to call it and leaving it at that. It's yes, we're going to always manifest obstacles for ourselves. And that's true for all of humanity, all creation. So that's the basis of our teachings. And, and as I said, when I started, uh, I, I channel source. I believe everybody channels source in their own way. I don't think there's anything special about me at all. Uh, the only thing that happened for me is that I had very disconnected parents um, as a child and I went inward to survive and, and I stayed inward <laughs> mostly. And then I got out and played in the 3D world. I made lots of mistakes, had my human experience. I'm still having it and I'm learning from it and I've learned a lot from it and I've developed a system to live in harmony with universal law and systematically detune the matrix, detune my ego. And I've started teaching it to other people. And that practice is called Taya. And so you'll hear us talk about, a lot about Taya, T-Y-A. Uh, I originally created it as trust your abundance, uh, mm -hmm. meaning ab abundance is whatever you mean abundance to be, or you, you define that. But I have come to understand that learning to trust the universe delivers everything you want. And we, we have students of Taya. David is a fantastic student of Taya all and all the time. And we talk about this stuff. And there's a couple of topics I do want to talk about tonight. I want to talk about what the matrix is, since this is our first uh, public outside of just Patreon broadcasts in a while. I want to talk yeah. about source, what source is, how you know when you're, you're channeling source and when you're not. Um, and then I want to talk about uh, our, our humanized versions of source. 
a little bit. I don't want to get myself in too much trouble in the very first go around here. But a little <laughs> bit. So yeah. if you have questions about anything, you can type them in. Uh, yeah. David, so where do you want to start? You want to start talking about the Matrix? Sure. Yeah, we could talk about the Matrix. We could do that. <laughs> Yeah, although I have a very different perspective on the matrix than so okay. So first of all, anybody who's listening, we probably better define the terminology because matrix gets thrown around in a lot of contexts. Sometimes it can be used almost I I've seen it used in like kind of conspiracy theory circles about the government is controlling you kind of thing. And I don't think that's really what we're talking about. To me, the the it's more of like the all right, well, I'll use my definition, which is maybe actually a little different than yours, but to me. I don't even like using the term matrix. I think of it as infrastructure or fundamental paradigm of how we view the world. So to me, like when you are brought up, uh, you're uh, sort of taught, oh, you're supposed to behave in this certain sort of way or you're certain, you, like your language is, is part of the matrix. So like your culture, your societal norms and things like that. But with that comes a lot of, let me try to say this in the most tie away. It's totally beneficial and it's a good thing because if we didn't have any guardrails on society it would be chaos it's like having no lines on the road uh but it does at some point become a bit constrictive where people are like well you have to have a job that pays the salary by this age in order to be successful and that's when it becomes a judgment thing so for me uh I kind of just acknowledge like, hey, this is kind of like an infrastructure of society or this is how we've sort of like um, uh, uh, like the, 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 the guide rails, so to speak. But uh, I think we also have to be ready to deliberately throw those out when they're no longer serving us. So if you're looking like, say, at a politician that you don't like and it's upsetting you or that's that system is kind of in place to make you scared to vote in a certain way. So I think, so to me, like the whole, and I also think of the matrix as in like the, the, the rules in my head that I've constructed or the belief systems that have been formed since I was a little kid. So for me, the Taya practice is really about how I basically observe my reaction to my operating system that's going on behind the scenes and then examine if it's serving me and then basically rewrite it through what we call a detuning process. And there's a lot of nuts and bolts and how you, you know, that, you know, but, uh, but it is actually a very simple process. What's so the force. Yeah. And the, early on, it sounds, it sounds complicated, yeah. but it's really yeah. very, very simple. Yeah. But, but here's the thing, like when you detune something, this is what's cool. And I, I don't understand how it works and I'm okay with that. But when I've um, been able to detune something, it either has an uncanny way of either exiting my life experience or I'm not bothered by it anymore. Like I had a situation where I had a, uh, this was six or eight months ago. I had a, a problem with uh, our, our health insurance where basically they hadn't certified any of the doctors in the entire County that we lived in. And there was no doctor. They were all technically in network, but they weren't certified uh, or, or uh, uh, what's it called? They, they, they had fill, filled out the paperwork and at some point I, I was on the phone for hours and hours with the insurance company. I realized, okay, well, this is upsetting me. I'm going to have to be doing this. And I did this whole detuning process and I'm meditating on it. And I started to perceive that the whole healthcare system was essentially like a sort of like a pyramid, like we were talking about like the wealth pyramid. It's basically a system of delivering healthcare that maybe started off in a positive intention, but maybe it's taken a few weird side turns has, has become a little bit convoluted, but it's still, it's serving a function. It's still infrastructure and we can go outside of it or we can stay inside of it. And when I let go of the judgment of it, suddenly it wasn't bothering me. I was still, I didn't necessarily enjoy being on hold for two hours, but I was sort of kind of okay with it. Here's what's crazy. Two days later, the doctor calls and they're like, Hey, we just got our paperwork and we can like see you now. <laughs> so I don't know how that's, and I, I have a probably, I could name 10 stories off the top of my head of they having this experience. Um, so I don't really get how that works, but I do genuinely believe when you let go of the negative judgment of something, it becomes a non-issue for you and it either goes away or it resolves itself. And that's where, to be honest, the talking about the matrix I'm cool with the matrix. I like it. 
And in fact, that's how I do business. <laughs> that's how I work. That's how I make money. That's how I'm a musician. So that's how I reach an audience. Sure. So I, I always you, talk about, yeah. I think when you get into any kind of mindset or spiritual practice, if you want to call it that, Early on, it may help to separate yourself from things that lower your vibe, like, you know, shut down the news. And if you're, you're doing tons of TV, if you're you know doing things that are mind altering a lot, you know, sure, it does help vibrationally because we talk about vibration all the time. I have a whole vibrational spiral training on YouTube. Uh, it's called the numeric vibrational spiral. Go mm -hmm. check that out sometime. Uh, that really explains how we operate because everything is vibrational, everything. And we are going up and down this, this vibrational spiral all the time. Sometimes we're up, sometimes we're down some, and most of the time we're somewhere in between the top and the bottom of the spiral. And when we're in higher vibration, we feel better. Things work better for us. Uh, we are source aligned. That is source, that high vibrational space. We're sort of loving all that is things are very easy. And then when we're less than that, when we're down our spiral and we all go down our spiral, then things are more challenging. That spiral is intended to give us this, this experience that's not just one dimensional. It's not just get everything that you want. It's here's some challenges. And are you going to follow a path where you're going to figure out how the universe really works? Or are you going to double down on the matrix and stay rooted there and and in your judgment and fear and all of these other things, just be sort of a cog in the machine and feel like, like a victim, feel like life is happening, you know, to you and not for you. Mm -hmm. And then when you get into this practice, it gives you the tools to operate up your spiral more times than not. And really uh, understanding how to manage it when it's down, because you will go down your spiral from time to time, but the detuning process <clears throat> is your key to changing your circumstances, changes behavior of people around you. And it's not about controlling them. It's about shifting your perspective of them and then noticing that you will be extracting different energy from even the people around you, uh, much less, um, you know, circumstances, events, money, health, you know, all of these things will start to shift in your detuning of your judgment of them. Because as long as we're judging something, we're fueling that negative narrative and we are going to produce more of that. We, you know, the call is always coming from inside the house. And the way I define the matrix is simply it's the collective consciousness of humanity. It's the ego consciousness of humanity. It is, it is a, a, a drain from source, meaning it, it separates us from source. But source is the source of all creation. Therefore, source created this lower vibrational experience for us to separate from it to produce new desires. Because if we're just at the top of the spiral all the time and we're just happy all the time, and like I said earlier, we won't for nothing, then we're not creating anything. We actually go down our spiral. We meet our challenges. We can meet them in joy or anger or however we choose to do it. And we can solve them or not. We can expand our challenges. We see people do that all the time. You know, you, things get worse and they start judging it and fearing it and labeling it as this shouldn't be happening. And then things just get worse. And then you know, sometimes you, the, the polarity of the universe just kind of pulls you back up naturally. And sometimes you prolong that, that negative or unwanted thing that's going on in your life because you're judging it. And one of the biggest things that I have, that I've taught myself in life is to stop labeling anything it should not be because that's just fueling more of whatever we're, we're, we're giving it power. You know, whatever it is, anytime you're suffering, anytime you're suffering, it's because you, you are focused upon or experiencing something that you have decided shouldn't be. I shouldn't be here. This shouldn't be happening. Those people shouldn't be doing that. Those somebody shouldn't be experiencing what they're experiencing. If you learn to stop labeling the should not be, you are going to be a lot happier because source does not label anything that way. Source is, is the source of all creation and understands that all creation has expansive value, even the things that we suffer in, even the things that we've been taught to demonize. And we're taught to demonize a lot. And that is the matrix that, that teaching of this is wrong. This shouldn't be, you shouldn't be experiencing that. Uh, all of these, these elements that separate us from our source consciousness 
I define all of that as the matrix, but I like elements of the matrix. You're right. Mm -hmm. I love when I get in my car that there's a stop sign and a light and a left turn signal and you know, yeah. all of those things. I, I, I need that. Well, that's you just want to be chaos, matrix. you know? <laughs> and I, and I think if we, I, I do believe, and I do believe this, I believe that we can set a positive intention and go out into the world uh, without any rules and be okay. I just got through watching yeah. this, this mini series called 1883. If anybody's a Yellowstone fan out there, I love the West. I'm from Texas. I love all that stuff. So 1883 is a fantastic, fantastic piece of television. Uh, very, very well written, very deep. Um, but it can also be very violent. But my point is, is that it was about a family that was traversing the wild West where there was no laws, there were, there were no police, there were no, there was no military. It was the wild West and you were battling bandits and, and, and natives and all of these people to get through. And of course, as any story like that, some people survived and, and many did not. I do believe that you can go into the wild West. You can go into uh, a physical environment with no rules or laws or judgment or any of that stuff and have a positive experience and, and survive it, if you will, or at least move through it uh, in a longer amount of time without being murdered or freeze to death or anything like that. I do believe that's true. However, we, we are operating in a matrix. You know, there, there are things that happen to all of us, including myself, that regardless of how much work you do, you're going to be down the spiral sometimes. So I don't know where I am vibrationally when I get in that car. I do set an intention, you know, for a safe and stress-free journey. And I always have it. But I'm still glad that the rules are there. Yeah. You know, and, and the matrix is not the matrix has brought us to this point where we have all of this technology. And you know, AI is such a fascinating thing. You know, yeah. it, this technology where we can do this and have mm -hmm. people from the other side of the planet, you know, Leslie on with us right now. Um, I, I, I love that. The matrix delivered all of that. So there's positive and negative, just like on any anything else, there's positive and negative on every topic. I have a question. This is a little bit off topic, but it had come up to my mind, come into my mind the other day or earlier today. And we talk about detuning and kind of removing judgment and like this only the suffering is in it. This should not be. Um, and I agree hundred uh, percent. I find very successful uh, experiences with detuning stuff. That's either a general thing or a past trauma or a future fear or something like that. But when I'm like in an acute situation right in the moment, I'll give you an example. I had to go to the dentist on Monday and uh, they had to like put in a cavity. And so I was numbed up and then they're drilling and I kind of was a little anxious beforehand, but not worried about it because I've never been afraid of the dentist. But let me tell you, it was actually really uncomfortable. I, it was kind of like torture for me. And so when I'm like the day before I'm thinking about the dentist, I can detune the dentist. When I'm looking back to last Monday, I can sort of do that. Oh, that was an expansive experience. When I'm actually in the chair in that acute pain, I couldn't detune it. It was just like, all right, just going to get this over with. What do you do when you're like actually in it? Like, what? Do you, how do you detune that? Then? Actually, I, I have gotten to a point where I can detune it in the moment, but it, it's it's work to get there. I, I've been doing this for 55 years, right? So I've been playing with this stuff really my whole life. So you, you can work toward that because there are people in our community that experience chronic pain. And there are people in our community that go into a scenario where it's acute and, and they have the experience, but it, it's not when you are in the chair and you're feeling the pain and you catch yourself like, wow, I'm thinking I shouldn't be experiencing this right now, but I am. Right. So what if I, I see, that's the stuff I love. I like to play with that in the moment. If you can catch yourself now, I will tell you, I had a tooth pulled uh, just before COVID hit. Uh, and I, I've had this long saga of getting the, the, the replacement put in and all that. But uh, I went into a, a, a dentist for a second opinion because I wanted to save the tooth uh, because it was kind of split. And I was hoping I could save it with a crown. The second dentist said, no, you got to pull it. We can do it right now. I'm like, really? I thought I was going to have to go somewhere else and all this. He says, no, no, we can do it right now. Let me get, he sent me into this other guy. And the guy pulls out this giant needle and just rams it in the roof of my mouth without any warning or anything. And I scream. It's the first time I've ever like screamed out loud in any kind of medical law. Ah, you know, <laughs> and I wasn't expecting it. So there was no preparation for it, but I experienced yeah. it. 
But uh, of, of course, you know, that was a, a situation that kind of came and went. But dental pain is a real thing. But now I love, because I've had a lot of dental work done, and now I love sitting in that chair and using my mindset to, to change the experience. So what do you do in advance to prepare for that? Because I don't get like <laughs> cavity filled very often. This is the first time in my life, actually. What do you do oh, really? to prepare for that? Because I kind of didn't see it coming. But even if I was doing it again now, I'm not sure how I kind of, it's kind of like, you know, people who say <clears throat> they hate going to the gym until they're at the gym and then they're having fun. Right. It's like, how do you actually you 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 do get with this practice you get control of your your mindset more to where you learn how to psych yourself into the okay. the intention of, of the experience you're, you're psyching yourself into it because in the beginning you've got to do that because your mind is trained dentist is bad your mind is trained gym is bad you know you, somewhere along the lines you've gotten yourself trained that it's a pain to go to the gym or you're not going to have a good experience or the dentist or whatever it is and you you've got to sort of force it for a while because you're right. shifting your mindset. It's a hard thing to do. And I know there are people that say, oh, I don't want to force anything. I just want to go with the flow and just be. And I think that that's fine to have that experience. Yeah. But I like taking have, having that that sovereign control, yeah. you know, over my mindset and over my how I'm reacting to what I manifest. I love that. I had to get an MRI not too long ago and I went into this closed MRI, you know, where the things right on top of your head. And, you know, if you move it all, they've got to redo it and, and, it's, and it's tedious. And I was you know, and you're totally encapsulated. And suddenly I got like this itch on my leg oh, and man. I had to psych myself out of the detune the itch because I right. couldn't scratch it. I didn't want to push the button and come out and have to do it all over again. You know, and I was already in that that sort of mode going in there that, hey, I'm going to meditate. I'm yeah. going to make this a positive experience. You know, I, you know, I love being enclosed. It's really cool. You know, I'm just going to be completely, uh, you know, out of my body, just consciousness and let them, you know, do what they want, you know, yeah. with the MRI. And then suddenly this itch pops up and it was like, ah, this is interesting. This is a challenge that I've created for myself to have a, a heightened experience. And I did. You know, I simply willed it away. It just stopped. Right. It stopped bothering me. So I love doing stuff like that. But I don't know. I mean, I'm a geek about all this stuff. I really geek out on mindsets and mind over yeah. matter and creating your own experience and, and shifting experiences and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And yes. And, and some of you are commenting and I appreciate all your comments. Yeah, if yeah. you're not registered through StreamYard, you just show up to us as Facebook user. Although John Fiore... Uh, talking about pineapple pizza, I always know that's a dead giveaway. Um, so the discussion around this stuff, that's why I love these types of broadcasts, yeah, yeah. because I love the discussion of this stuff, because we all throw ideas and scenarios out there and questions get answered. And I am a student of my source connection. And that's what the stream of David is. That's what I talk about all the time. And I, it's an ongoing process for me. I have not crossed the line of enlightenment or perfection. I don't think that really exists, um, yeah. but we're all students of it. And, yeah. and I will say that I've been at it for a while and there's a lot of things that I've experienced differently. And if I can do anything to help bring people along that want to go on yeah. the journey. And if somebody doesn't want to go on the journey, I'm completely fine with that. Right. We're all operating in belief systems. We all, the stream has said this over and over again. We are like robots on an oper with an operating system, which is our belief system. We create our belief systems mostly by default uh, to, as a reaction to what we experience. And, and that creates our, our life, our reality. And you, you need not go very far in this world with social media to experience vastly different belief systems. And being able to appreciate all of them and authentically appreciate all of them. That's source because source does appreciate all of them. Source would not create something that it did not understand. And through deep understanding, we arrive at appreciation. Mm -hmm. And if anyone has questions, like pop them in, please do. I mean, I, I see there's a lot of people watching. I love having a group to talk about this stuff because you're probably going to have ideas that, that, that we won't, and you're going to ask a question. And like, I, everybody knows, like I would ask the stream all these questions and it was really fun. Hey, Vanessa, uh, 
Oh, okay. Three weeks ago, I had to have emergency surgery, and while in the hospital, I adopted the attitude that this was a time I wanted and needed to rest and be cared for and pampered, and things went smoothly. There you go. That's uh, I love it. I love it. I forgot that I have that um, ability to <laughs> pop the, uh, oh, right. the questions and the comments up on the screen. Yeah. So yeah. You're, you're, you're famous now. All these 10 million people that are viewing us are so, getting So there is a perfect example of taking something. You know, a coin has two sides. There's like an upside and a downside of everything. I, I look, I'm a symphony musician. Okay. You would think this is, I love this job, by the way, I have so much fun playing in a symphony orchestra. I'm playing opera this weekend. I love opera, but you would be amazed how many miserable symphony musicians there are out there who hate their jobs. I was shocked by that when I started working in the industry. So you can take a fun, awesome job and turn it into something miserable but you could also take what people consider a miserable thing and turn it into something positive it's just it's not always easy <laughs> you know you have to kind of like find a path to that so um yeah so but think of it as, yeah like shifting uh like uh, uh I don't know who said that shifting beliefs to something that works better uh for a person so take every belief system you can find in your thinking and ask yourself, is this serving me? Is this getting me further to where I want to go? This is why I personally, I kind of like my ego because that's what keeps me like going at stuff. Sure. keeps me working, you know? Your so ego is your human experience. We detune, yeah. but we don't eradicate an ego. Yeah. You do that when you die, when you, you cross over, whatever you want to call it. When we're yeah. finished with our human experience, well, the ego dissipates and, and yeah. we are re-emerged into source energy. I believe that. That's my belief system. Yeah. You are welcome to have any belief system that you want. That's my belief system, that the ego is part of the human vehicle for the physical environment. And that's our discerner of preference. But I do think that humanity has created this matrix mm -hmm. of beliefs. And there's, there's endless iterations of it for sure. Mm -hmm. But this matrix of beliefs that are about control, and largely about sort of lowering our vibration. If you watch my vibrational training on YouTube, I talk about humanity operating below neutral uh, at, at kind of a negative five vibration, which uh, is anxiety inducing and makes you very productive while still being very controllable. And we, we do see that. We, and, and I understand that there are people at the top of the financial pyramid that say, you know, we need lots of human beings uh, operating in, an, in a sort of negative five or anxiety state because they'll work for us. They'll do the things that we want them to do. They're drivers of commerce. Uh, the ones that are a little further down their spiral will fill up the prisons for us. You know, I'm not trying to be cynical, but there is that belief system out there. I know it exists. It's part of the matrix. It's, it's just part of, of humanity. Mm -hmm. So if we think about how that matrix has sort of been overdeveloped, I do believe that humanity is, is wising up to it. And the, the reason that I believe that is because I also believe that every generation is born up to speed with the time that they are born into. And they are more sophisticated. We do get more sophisticated the more we, we you know, expand humanity. And we see a younger generation that is vastly different in their belief system than just a few generations you know, ahead of them. And they are more questioning of what I call the matrix than any generation I've ever experienced. They're not religious. Uh, they don't trust the government necessarily. They don't necessarily believe in, in boundaries in terms of where you should live geographically. Hell, they're, they're questioning gender, right? They don't even want to be male or female anymore. And, and a lot of us that are older are like, oh, what's that all about? <laughs> but what it is, is, is they're breaking free of this human created matrix. So there's so many things that are human constructs that they're questioning. I love questioning. I love questioning. You know, when you get into conspiracy theories and things like that, I always want to hear a conspiracy theory. Now, I don't believe necessarily in going down the rabbit hole of fear and judgment around that stuff. Mm -hmm. But, you know, anything's possible. So why be afraid to listen to someone else's theory about something that could be? And if you feel your vibration being lowered, it's because you're judging what you're observing. Try, try absorbing something in non-judgment or absorbing something in non-fear. And they're kind of the same thing, obviously. But 
try just observing and not taking sides because you know you're more in deeper in the matrix when you're polarized. If you feel like you've got to go take a side on something and I've got to be right and you've got to be wrong, well, that's your ego. And that's, that's the collective ego of humanity is the matrix. And you're playing that game when you're thinking that your side is the right side and the other side is the wrong side. We certainly see that going on in politics these days. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be getting more divided as, as people want to be out of the matrix. The matrix is sort of coming, coming on stronger, right? Here's more things to be divided about. Don't you want to be afraid? And, and don't you want to be right? And don't you want other people to be wrong so that you can feel right? And that's how I know that I'm in the matrix if, I, if I'm thinking in a polarized way. And I know that I am allowing source when I'm appreciating all of it. And it's not looking down on people that are in the matrix. Like, oh, you little people, you're not as advanced as me. If you're doing that, you're definitely in the matrix. Because right. part of being source is appreciating that it takes all these different types of people to make up the matrix of humanity. And that's the beauty of our world. Mm -hmm. You mentioned for a second finance and wealth, and I something the topic maybe it was on the docket when we for, before we were talking. There's like talk of like recession. Yeah. And what's well, that? I, have, I will give you my, and it will it will come off in the beginning sounding very cynical, but I I pay attention to and know people that have a lot of money and, and invest, and, and I'm an investor and. In the investment class, the top of the wealth pyramid, the mindset there is recession is great. We love recession because when when the, we have a great recession, the stock market plummets, the real estate prices stabilize and things go down. All the stuff that I want to buy gets cheaper. I hold, you know, when I see the recession coming, uh, I am going to divert my money elsewhere. And then I'm going to go beat the drum of recession. Then I'm going to start, you know, talking about it and, and start trying to stir this up. I have, um, I have seen people talk about recession on social media for years now. Oh, it's coming. It's right around the corner. You bet. They're trying to make it happen. They are, they are seeking to manifest the recession because they want it to happen because the, the, that belief system is that when we have a recession, it's good for the people at the top and everyone down below and, you know, lower on the, in the financial pyramid may suffer some because of it, but at the end of the day, it always cuts better and things go back up. And in fact, you know, when you buy things on sale in, in investing and they go back up in value, that's when you make money. Yeah. So that it's that ride that everybody wants to take. Um, yeah. I think that, and I, I have proven this in my life over and over again, it's just like going out into the wild west. If you believe that you are abundant and that the universe cares for you no matter what, then a recession doesn't matter. You don't have to push it on right. people. You don't have to stoke the fear, which I would never do. And you don't have to react to the fear. I, I think I can give you evidence of that very sentiment is that when I was like a college student, I was broke. I was like making what $10,000 a year or something like that. It was like nothing. But I still went out and drank beer and ate pizza and had a good time with my friends. And we took road trips to like wherever. And then when I was in my first job, it was really low salary, you know, but I still went and did stuff and I had a good time. And as the year, as like your income goes up, you still have fun. It's not like, like suddenly, uh, it's not like I, it's not like, it's not like my time when I was broke was any less expansive or fun. And I think it's really just, I think that's kind of that sentiment of like, there's abundance everywhere. It's just, you know, it, it, there's no limit on that, you know? Yeah, I, I, I believe, and, and we have evidence of it everywhere. And I know that there's a lot of fear around, you know, financial abundance and just general well-being, uh, a whole lot of fear. That, that is the matrix, peddling all of that fear and perpetuating the fear and succumbing to the fear. That's all part of the matrix that we're talking about. And I have proven to myself that I will live a certain way no matter what what is happening in business, employment, finance. I have had a lot of money at my fingertips. I have been flat broke. I have been negative in debt, overdrawn in my adult life. And I've gone through these cycles, but my lifestyle has never changed. Right. 
And I realized that my core belief system, and this started out when I was really young because I understood law of attraction, I got more into what do I want to experience than I need to have a certain bundle of wealth. Mm -hmm. And I think that if your belief system is that you need to have a certain bundle of wealth and that you're worthy of it, then you'll have that experience. We see that there are people with, you know, tons of money. I didn't really develop that. I developed more. I want to live in a nice home. I want to drive a nice car. I want to eat the food that I want to eat. I want to have nice clothes to wear. I want to be able to go and do what I want to do. Ultimately, I, my, a big thing for me is I didn't want to answer to anybody. And I, I over and over again throughout my lifetime manifested getting that, that just like fell in my lap. Those scenarios where I wasn't reporting to anyone, I wasn't answering to anyone. I had the things that I wanted to have materially. And the only fear and judgment, it was when the money wasn't coming in until I showed myself that, wow, I can be in the scenario with no money and still the lights are on. The, the, the house is nice. The car is lovely. You know, all of those things that I believe are just constants for me. Mm-hmm. And that's my belief system. And I've actually gotten really comfortable in that belief system so much so that sometimes I get bored <laughs> and then I get bored and then I start you know, doing stuff like this again, because I love doing this stuff. I love yeah. talking about this. So I, I know that w- we are all raised in this, this, this matrix of, of fear and judgment, especially when it comes to money and health and relationships. Those seem to be the big three that people believe they need to be happy and the matrix tells us is so difficult to achieve. It's so hard to be healthy. Healthcare is so expensive. Oh my gosh. And we need universal healthcare and we need the government to pay for it. And you need the right doctor and this is going to kill you. And that's going to kill you. And you better be on this and that and the other thing. And, you know, something's going to get you or you're going to be miserable, you know, in, in this health experience and relationships are tough. They're so difficult. And most of them are in divorce and, you know, all of these negative things that we're taught. And when you detune the judgment of that stuff, you find yourself having very different experiences. And I will tell you, for me, it doesn't look like one relationship forever and it's perfect all the time. That has not been, I've been divorced twice. I'm in my third long-term relationship now. And I love it and it's fantastic and happier than I've ever been. But I didn't reach that point until after I was 50. But I don't regret the other two relationships because it was part of my human experience that brought me to this place where I was really ready for this one. And if this one, you know, lasts five years, a decade, the rest of my life or whatever, I I love the experience. I love that those other experiences brought me here. The same thing goes for health. I'm not always perfectly healthy, but I always find my way back to feeling good and, and generally, you know, still kicking around and physical. So I, I know that we can all do that. I, I work, I have worked with enough people over the years to where I've seen the magic happen when we learn to detune the matrix, detune our ego, allow more source and trust. The trust thing is so important. So the recession thing, if you don't take anything else away from this, this interaction tonight, we're already 45 minutes in, don't allow fear. And when somebody is stoking the fear around recession and you're going to lose your job or your retirement's going to shrink, don't succumb to the fear of that stuff because I've lived through that stuff and I've chosen not to t- take part in it. I've just said, you know, I'm not going to participate in the recession. I'm not going to participate, um, <clears throat> you know, the, the pandemic <clears throat> when that arrived, you know, that was a very challenging one to not participate in. Yeah especially living in California where everything got shut down. And it was an interesting journey because there were certain things that, that, that were part of my reality that I realized, okay, this is an interesting little challenge to learn, to detune this, to detune the mask mandate and detune having to show a card that I'm vaccinated and, you know, that whole experience. And now we're the, the other side of that. And it's almost like it never even happened now. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. I kind of forgot about it. Yeah. <laughs> and I was in an industry that really got slaughtered. Oh, I yeah. Mean, yeah, I mean, definitely. I were. mean, we had to like, we would give concerts and they have these like plexiglass shields between the players. So we wouldn't like breathe on each other. And now I'm like, what was it? I was doing a, I was doing Beethoven nine a couple weeks ago and there's all these choirs backstage and backstage areas are cramped. So I'm like slugging through like the whole like 
like troves of like singers and all these people. And I was like, Oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot. It was like the days of social distancing. Nice sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> like that's, I guess that's <laughs> over, you know? Yeah. But I mean, I we can't, we're right back to where we were before now. And it's, it's yeah. like, okay, that's interesting that we moved through that experience. And yeah, I, I just, uh, and people are kind of picking it apart still and all that. I just kind of look back and think, Oh, it was an experience that we had. Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting thing that, that I lived yeah. through that I never imagined I would have lived through. Yeah. yeah. Something that, uh, re I remember from the boot camp experience was, um, there was one module where you, it was towards the end where you, you chose a topic that was like really triggering for you and tried to find like three or five upsides of it. And I kind of, you were challenged to yeah. really do something like hard like a political party you don't like or some social thing or whatever. And I remember um, that was, uh, it, it, it took me a while to, to find the, the things I appreciated about that topic about the, I think it was the three topics I had, but I would say if you're feeling any fear about recession or things like that, because it's probably going to resurface more and more conversations in the mainstream news about this, but try to do that exercise with yourself try to like look at the upside of recession i mean for me there are quite a few awesome stock a company stocks to like great companies that i love and would totally buy except i think they're overpriced right now i'm waiting for the price to come down and then i would buy it because yeah. it's a great company and i've studied the companies you know yeah so here's a good uh, a, a good question <clears throat> how do I make, uh, how do I live with someone who is a negative Nelly who is constantly arguing for his limitations? Uh, how do I make that easier? Uh, Good one. It's interesting because I just had a coaching session today uh, with somebody in boot camp who's having the same experience. So it's fresh on my mind. But the, the detuning process is as simple as appreciation because we talk about appreciation as this is how source views all of humanity. And when we talk about appreciation, we're not talking about, oh, I appreciate him so much. He's just so wonderful. That's kind of fluffy surface stuff that doesn't really do much for you. Think about appreciation as deep understanding. So the reason that, you're, that you are suffering a bit with your negative Nelly is your judgment. Uh, you yeah. said it was him, so of him. And you're, you're judging him as, oh my gosh, he shouldn't be this way. Uh, he's limiting us. He's limiting himself. I'm a student of all of this attraction stuff. And I know what he's doing to him. And I know what he might be doing to us. All of that stuff is really wrapped up in your own judgment of the scenario. And that's really all you have control over. So work on detuning your judgment of it in the way that the antidote to judgment is understanding. So if you understand someone deeper, like, why is he like this? How was he raised? What is his belief system? Uh, you know, and, and even though he's creating his own suffering in it, as, as you're witnessing, why? You know, seek to understand the why behind that, so that you can detune your own judgment of it, because your judgment of it is creating your experience in it, and it's feeding it. And you'll be amazed. And again, the Matrix would say. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. That's crazy. You don't appreciate somebody that's dragging you down like that. You can't appreciate somebody that's, you know, doing something to you. Well, when we move toward deep understanding of, we are moving towards source perspective. So source is all love, all appreciation, all creation. So when we're thinking from that perspective, and it's in you, it's in all of us, it's in everything. So when you're thinking from that perspective, you are viewing him now through the eyes of source because you, you are the eyes of source and you will not judge him. You will begin to appreciate him for where he is and that will start to detune the behavior and it will take time because this vibration that you've both of you have created is well established in a relationship. So you, it takes some time and effort to sort of unravel that and detune it and allow the judgment of it to fall, fall away and then you will start to see a change of some sort. And when people really get into this, when people get into Thai boot camp, well, the first things I tell them is you've got to be ready for your relationships to change because you're going to start raising your vibration, being in more appreciation, more abundance, more trust. That sounds great. But if they're not, you can't change that. And they may be so damn bothered by you. They want to get away from you. 
we've had boot campers get divorced as a result of coming through boot camp because the partner just liked that lower vibrational version of the person and the person had a, a decision to make. Do I want to raise my vibration and be more in joy and clarity and abundance? Or do I want to keep it where it was to stay safe in this relationship with this person? There's nothing, there's no wrong answer to that, but you've got a decision to make. If you want to keep raising your vibration, you don't need to change the other person. You need to change you and watch how that changes the other person. I have two cents on this because I've had a similar experience myself. I think that when I'm triggered by something, I don't, I'm not sure about this, but this is what I think. It's because there's an aspect in my vibration that is aligning with it. And I do not like that aspect in myself that is aligning with it. Yeah. That. What am I doing to attract this? Right. We all do that. You know, well, how do I attract this? Well, what am I doing? Yeah. Sort of like I had this experience where I, like my YouTube channel popped up. I, I, David, I told you this about a while ago. I, I, a channel came up and they were talking about like a serial murderer and they were interviewing this guy and he was talking very cal like very casual about the people he had killed. And it was it was really weird. My post Taya self was like, oh, that's interesting. I wasn't triggered at all. I didn't wasn't celebrating. I wasn't like happy about it. I wasn't like, oh, I want to do that. I was just like, you know, but I wasn't like negatively reacting to it. That same day, a student comes to the lesson and they haven't practiced and I'm spitting fire. Like, why have you not practiced? And I'm like, how is it that I'm not bothered or not, not, not triggered or disturbed by a serial killer, but I am triggered by like a six-year-old kid who can't practice the trombone. And here's why I think, because there's a part of me, there's no part of me that's going to be a serial killer. I'm not repressing an urge to murder people. There's no alignment with that whatsoever. And I can therefore look at it and say, oh, well, I'm not a participant. I'm just an observer. But there is an aspect of me that could be lazy and not practice my instrument. And I don't like that because my ambition wants me to be otherwise. And I'm resistant to that aspect of myself. And when I see that reflect in another person, it bugs me because I'm trying to change that side of myself that I see reflected in them. If that makes sense. Yeah. But I think your, if your like, judgment of that potential creates the, yeah. the trigger. So if someone being negative is bothering you. It's probably because there maybe is something in you that is aligning with that and you don't like that alignment. Very good point. So, which then always turns the mirror back to me. Yeah, that's like, I love what Vanessa said. I is like the most selfish thing in the world. Yeah. yeah, there's something about you that I don't like about me. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And, and that's what I do. We all do that when we, when we claim ownership of all of our everything because we're manifesting everything. That's very empowering, but it can also be very annoying, especially in the beginning, because then when you have a negative reaction, you kind of stop and say, "Well, God, how do I attract that?" Right. Because I did, because it's all creation is conscious creation. So when you're interacting with someone who is having, you know, some negative reaction to something, you are party to that. Right. And if it's a relationship where you're living together, or you're together all the time, and it's kind of an ongoing thing, you are co-creators of it. So again, you're not going to change another person. You, you can only work on yourself and you can only work really on your reaction to it. But then changing your reaction to it will change the behavior ultimately. Right. Yeah. And uh, Leslie. Hey, Leslie. <laughs> when you're triggered, it's for you. And trigger, and she knows that very, very well. She's a student of this stuff for, for quite some time. So thank you, Leslie. So this has been a fantastic interaction. Uh, this is Claim Your Power Hour. We do this uh, for Patreon. Uh, in our, over on our Patreon channel uh, every Thursday night. I think it's going to be at 4 p.m. But uh, we do have a new social media hour uh, starting next week that's going to be on Wednesdays. And it's going to be Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific. Every Wednesday we will be live uh, on a couple of pages on Facebook. Uh, the Stream of David uh, will be live in the Taya Practice page and on Spirituality Gone Wild, if you're members of that. Uh, and we will be live on the Stream of David YouTube channel every Wednesday at 5 p.m. You can join, you can interact, you can ask questions, uh, you can ask questions of source. If there's something that you are wanting to know, what is source perspective on something, we, we can get that to you. Uh, and the thing that I, I have to say that I love about the stream is, yes, we will answer questions, but the, the guidance of the stream is always guiding you inward to your own version of source. 
It's never, you have to come here for answers. It's never about that. It's always just, this is what we're doing to allow more source. And when you allow more source, then you go on this journey, like you're seeing uh, David here, you know, this explore, uh, this, this um, exploratory journey where you are starting to really react differently to life and notice how life is reacting differently back to you. I found that during the boot camp process was that um, I always, if I was really persistent in going inside myself, I would usually find the answers in there. So you, you always can find the solution. It's just, just a matter of going, for me, it was going deep into the meditations and really, really shutting my brain down and just yeah, well, it's about raising your vibration and that yeah. does that for you right there's lots of techniques you can develop to just raise your vibration it's yeah. just as simple as that three to five game that you mentioned the three to five things to appreciate raises your vibe you raise your vibe you've got more source flowing right. and when you're above neutral you've got you're now capable of solutions and new thought and all that stuff here's an exercise the listeners can try if you want to like um um uh like if I think of like a low pressure manifestation that I would like, like someone giving me like 50 bucks or something like that, that would be really awesome, but it wouldn't like be a life or death thing. So don't do this with like something you really could potentially hammer at. But if you just contemplate it and the first thought that pops in your head is like, oh, I don't know if that could happen or something like that. Well, then your little DTS that puts you like maybe minus two. But if you kind of like just sit quietly for a while, and just sort of stare out into space. I have this experience where at some point it's sort of like something tips a little bit and the I feel like the light changes and suddenly I feel a bit more present. And if I then go back and revisit that topic, suddenly I feel like, oh yeah, actually that could happen, you know? And that's, to me, there's that little tipping point. We go past zero and all of a sudden you're in plus one or plus two. And I think, it's, you know, I do a lot of driving for my work. So I have a lot of time to kind of like, experiment with this stuff but it's really kind of cool when you sort of like observe how your perception of a desired thing uh changes depending on where you are in your vibrational state but i think but but don't try that with something like like really like when you want it badly because when you want something it's very easy to start activating need yeah. and sort of hammering it so you gotta start with something really simple like uh, well, I see a red car or something, you know, uh, and, but just more, it's about your, uh, perception and your reaction to that possibility. What's the knee jerk thought that pops in your head? I like that. I like that. And then, uh, next week we can cover <laughs> the other topic. Um, I, I really want to get into the vibration of need and all that, because I think that's a big one for people. So on next week, we, uh, weekly broadcast, we'll definitely jump into that. I want to thank, uh, David for being here. Uh, and all of you for watching live again, check out our Patreon page. Uh, everything that we do is there. The entire Academy is, is housed there. Uh, our podcast is there. Our weekly lives are there. Everything that we do, there's different tiers that you can become a member of. You can join, you can upgrade, downgrade, opt out anytime. Uh, that's what I love about that. It's off of social media. Uh, but I am looking forward to coming back and doing this Wednesday night show for Facebook and YouTube. So mark your calendars uh, every Wednesday night, 5 p.m. Pacific. I'll be live uh, solo or with a guest um, and answering your questions and, and talking about all this, this cool tie stuff that we love to talk about. Okay. Thank you all so much for joining us. We appreciate it.